Hello, <coughs> my name's Michael Keneally and I'm telling you about the issues to do with the lunar eclipse, the full moon at the end of January 2019. I'm speaking to you from our healing centre on the west of Ireland coast and here the eclipse is on the 21st of January, although in some parts of the United States it's on the 20th. And also it's called a supermoon, that's because it's nearer to the earth and therefore brighter. And also called a blood moon because as the moon becomes extinguished by the shadow of the earth, it turns reddish. So it is a very powerful moon and it's a good idea to listen to where it falls in our natal charts and what that means. So there's a blog to go with this video, as there always is. It's on my Star Wheel Astrology blog. And that gives like a, a diagram of what a lunar eclipse, eclipse of the moon is. And it also gives the Vedic and Western astrology charts for the eclipse. And also a map of the eclipse's visibility across the surface of the earth. So uh, you need to have a look at the blog because there's a lot more detail in the blog than there is in this brief video. Okay, um, where is the eclipse in the heavens? Well, in the Vedic astrology, which uses the sidereal zodiac and must use the sidereal zodiac for accurate and complete declaration, the moon is at six degrees Vedic Cancer and the sun of the eclipse is opposite at six degrees Vedic Capricorn. So it's a Cancer Capricorn eclipse using the sidereal zodiac, which Vedic astrology employs to declare our incarnational life purpose and all the circumstances in the different areas of our life and consciousness that we will attract to work out that life purpose. Now, Western astrology, on the other hand, is at its best psychodynamic. It includes evolutionary dimensions, you know, the work we continue from past lives. But because it uses the tropical zodiac, what it declares there is how we'll experience the evolution of our soul psychologically. So Western astrology is psychological. And in Western astrology, the eclipse is at one Leo in the tropical zodiac and the sun at one Aquarius. Now it's crucial to note that Vedic astrology doesn't only use the 12 sign solar zodiac. It also has a truly magnificent 27 sign lunar zodiac, the portion of the heavens that the moon occupies in the approximately 27 days it, it takes to orbit round the earth. And in terms of the nakshatras, um, well, I've got a video about every nakshatra online and also a blog post about every nakshatra online. Uh, and I have a wonderful nakshatras course on my Master Vedic Astrology website. Um, and in terms of the nakshatras, the eclipse moon is in Pushyami nakshatra. And the eclipse sun is opposite in Uttarashada nakshatra. And these have very big implications, you know, if you have planets there or a significant house there, you know, activating an area of life. And I want to say that the nature of eclipses is basically the undamming of damned up energies. And if we are sort of on course for the spiritual 
purpose of our life, then eclipses can be immensely beneficial undamming of planetary principles in our life or of the affairs of that of the house in the birth chart, the area of life that the house the eclipse is in represents. But if we're off course and blinding ourselves to that fact, eclipses can be devastating and you know, do, do get an astrology reading from me if you have got planets in Vedic Cancer or Vedic Capricorn in Pushyami Nakshatra or Uttarashada Nakshatra or indeed in Vedic Sagittarius as well because the point is this lunar eclipse further activates the growth of the great conjunction Saturn K2 Pluto that started to form with the solar eclipse on the 5th of January and this great conjunction is the biggest event of 2019 and obviously it's in uh, Vedic Sagittarius so it affects hugely Vedic Sagittarius and especially uh, Uttarashada, sorry, Purvashada Nakshatra within Vedic Sagittarius. It affects Vedic Gemini opposite, I'll be going into that. But it also affects other signs and houses. Vedic Gemini, Vedic Capricorn, Vedic Aquarius, for example. So 2019 isn't an easy year. It is a year to be careful, to be focused, to develop the good perception that I hope to offer in these blogs. It's a time to plan severance from situations you should no longer be in. As we live, we hopefully develop perception and we don't stick in situations so long that they mean our utter downfall. So, it's not only the sun and the moon that are caught up in this eclipse. Um, so basically the sun has conjunct it, the sun in Capricorn has conjunct it, um, K2, the south node of the moon, and Mercury. And the moon has Rahu, the north node, conjunct it. So there's quite a few planets caught up in it. But it's wider than that. There is a very important T-square. Uranus is square 90 degrees to both ends of the eclipse axis. And we'll be looking at that most important energy that can be very beneficial. Um, there's also a Jupiter-Neptune square and we'll be at the same time as the eclipse and we'll be looking at that. As I said, Mercury is caught up in this eclipse and indeed another one in 2019, so we'll be looking at that. And lastly, another planetary aspect at the time of this eclipse is Neptune sextile Saturn, which I'm personally finding very beneficial and I'll tell you about that. So, do get in touch for an astrology reading um, at this important time, at the start of really quite massive times coming ahead. So, going through the blog, well, there is the Vedic chart, there is the Western chart, and there's the Eclipse visibility map. And we go into more detail on the nature of an eclipse. So I've already said it's the undamming of dammed up energies. It's like an earthquake. If there's more and more tension in the Earth's crust, there will be an earthquake. If it's under the sea, there will be a tsunami as well. And indeed, earthquakes and tsunamis frequently occur on the surface of our Earth at the time of eclipses. And so these eclipses are intense turning points for good or ill, personal or collective. And um, 
Negatively, eclipses mean learning through turmoil or shock, drama or crisis. But the more we live in tune with our body energies and our spiritual life purpose and the path of our spiritual consciousness, the more an eclipse can release blocks and expand our consciousness and push our physical creativity in this life to higher, better and more beautiful levels. So you absolutely need to hear in a reading from me about what an eclipse will mean if it's on one of your planets. And also, to understand an eclipse, you have to look at the house it falls on. You see, each house in the birth chart depicts an area of life. In fact, watch my blog posts because over the next two weeks I'm putting out posts on how to decipher the meaning of an eclipse and how to decipher the meaning of transits through the houses in your birth chart. I was going to do it earlier but my blog has been moved between servers so to spare my hard-working webmaster I didn't want to overload him. Um, but you need to look at the house an eclipse falls in. So this one falls in my first house and in theory, that can mean um, you know, personal downfall, accident, injury, uh, etc. But the first house isn't only to be understood negatively and positively. It can be a liberation and an expansion of how you project in the world. You might have been going on tram lines which were no longer really appropriate for you. You might have been working to definitions of yourself, your life and your work that were too narrow. So this eclipse in the first house could be very beneficial. Because of the horrid energies of 2019, including the energies of that great conjunction in Vedic Sagittarius, in, in Purvashadha Nakshatra, we need to be very careful all through t 2019 but failing to embrace opportunities for liberation is not being careful, it's being self-ruinous. We need to carefully, and in a, a method of good perception, embrace our new inspirations and directions, but carefully. Um, so the first thing to consider is that Ketu is in Vedic Capricorn. Ketu is at two degrees Vedic Capricorn. Ketu always retrogrades in the heavens. And so it's spent the last 18 months going through Vedic Capricorn. And on the 6th of March, it's about to enter the next sign going backwards, Vedic Sagittarius. And that's very, very big because it absolutely sets off the great conjunction that was started with the 5th of January solar eclipse. So what has Ketu in Capricorn meant for you so far? Well I personally think that Ketu in Capricorn has been liberating of technical matters and so for example I've been building an extension but Ketu in Capricorn is also inspirational in a scientific way. Um, so I feel I've had wonderful waves of inspiration writing a novel I'm currently writing on meeting the gods and goddesses of the ancient Irish. And really on deeper and deeper and deeper understanding the mythic dimension. You see, we live in consumer modernity, so often in flats, in big cities. But humanity is really attuned to the mythic dimension. Consumer modernity says that doesn't exist. But unless we embrace our mythic dimensions then we will not understand why we're being driven in certain directions. 
And of course, we won't embrace the greatness, the beauty, the empowerment of these myths. And I think that mythic uh, exploration has been huge for me during Cato in Capricorn. And also relevant to Cato in Capricorn, my wife Maggie Pashley and I have sort of explored the energy-rich rocks, the ancient megalithic monuments around here in the west of Ireland. And the energy in those rocks is truly awesome. You know, you can just, if you put your hand on them, you feel it flooding up your arm. And indeed, it was this that brought Neolithic farmers to this area in Ireland. And, uh, I mean, they're obviously ruined or overshadowed if they're next to a road or a load of people, or if archaeologists have excavated the site and crassly, allegedly um, restored it. But on the remote sacred sites around here, the energies in the rocks are truly awesome. And then beyond that, and typical of Ketu in Capricorn, uh, Maggie's um, got hold of a device called a Lecker antenna, L-E-C-H-E-R, Lecker antenna. And that marks, uh, sorry, maps energies. So it will map energies in your body and it will change energies in a room. But it also maps earth energies and indeed on the guidance of uh, other people using the Lecker antenna it can be found that those ancient megalithic sites, for example the circular quartz tombs built of quartz rich stone four and a half thousand years ago, move aside the energy lines in the landscape and create a high energy circle which was associated with the burial of the beloved dead of the Neolithic inhabitants around here who had very sophisticated spiritual roots in fact going back to Turkey for example you know they migrated in boats absolutely from the Katlhoyuk and Gebeli Teki area of Turkey here to the west of Ireland and it was the high quartz energy rocks that attracted them and so they built these tombs and monuments out of them and I feel their shaman and magicians and druids enhance the high energy rocks even higher. So I'm telling you about all this to show how K2 in Capricorn has come through for us. So K2 is a cutting energy of dissolution. It destroys things but for spiritual purpose and for illumination. And so inspiration and awareness of technical earth energies is you know like a higher form of K2 in Capricorn. Capricorn's all about structure, stone, buildings, technologies, that sort of thing. So that's briefly K2 in Capricorn, but um, the moon of the eclipse is of course opposite in Vedic Cancer. And this is powerful because Cancer is ruled by the moon. And so it this eclipse will probably be felt by all of us in like the state of our mind. And so if we are, you know, getting very upset and despondent, it's an action call to change that which in our life is disturbing our mind. I mean, some of us have minds that are disturbed anyway. For example, if you have an unsupported moon, a Kemadruma moon, or Rahu closely conjunct moon, then, or, or for example, um, moon in a Rahu north node ruled nakshatra, well then your mind will need stabilizing anyway. But this eclipse in Cancer ruled by the moon will make the turmoil and or repetitious thinking possibly worse. Be prepared for that. And for example, because Cancer is ruled by the moon and if you have moon conjunct K to the south node in your birth chart, be careful. Because Moon conjunct K2 is prone to emotional explosions and hissy fits anyway. 
and doesn't do well through eclipses. And this particular eclipse could make it even worse and it could be upsetting and damaging for you and the affairs of your life but also for family members if you have Moon conjunct K2. Now the eclipse is also in Pushyami Nakshatra. So Pushyami Nakshatra is the eighth nakshatra. It falls within Vedic Cancer where the eclipse is. And it's interesting that Pushyami Nakshatra is ruled by Saturn. But Pushyami's deity is uh, Jupiter and Saturn and Jupiter are opposites. So the call is to give your spiritual expansiveness structure and form. And another thing about um, Pushyamis is that they are incredibly caring and often too caring for their own good. And um, this eclipse could well throw up issues of caring and the spirituality of caring for you if it's in if you have a planet in Pushyami. And um, you might be called to look at and understand the spiritual contextualization of what is it to be caring. For example, to endlessly feed. People who simply take, take, take isn't caring. You have to be discerning to be caring. And Pushyami's power animal is the lead ram. So, you know, uh, Pushyamis are quite forceful carers. And uh, th so this eclipse, you know, if you have ascendant or a planet in Pushyami, could well manifest itself as you becoming more discerning about how to care 